can't follow that. Um, good to be here. Um, just to let you guys know off the top before we get started, uh, I am also unsure of my hat. Uh, <laughs> just Yeah, just so you know, we're all on the same page about what I've chosen to wear on my head today. Um, I thought I'd look like a cool skater guy, but I, I just look like uh, a dock worker who uh, is doing something illegal <laughs> with a union. I don't know. Um, anyway, uh, doing okay. Um, I, I must confess I am going through a breakup, and so, you know, it's okay. Yeah. Woo, thanks. Jeez. Uh, <laughs> thank you. Um, but anyway, um, I'm, I'm older now. Since, since my breakup, on this side of my breakup, I'm older. Um, we're all older. Um, and I'm, I'm 41 now, and I'm too old. I'm too old to be a fuckboy now. Uh, I'm far too old to be a fuckboy. Um, and I never really was one, but it's too late to join the ranks, I think. Um, I'm too old to be a fuckboy, and nobody wants a fuck man. Um, no. Um, there's no room in a just society for uh, a fuck man just roaming the streets. Says, hey, 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 yeah, hey, hey, hey. you know, because a fuck boy, you know, a fuck boy is like, I'm not gonna text you back. <laughs> you know, and a, a, a fuck man is like a. Hey, When you're gone, can I smell your seat? <laughs> sniff, sniff? Oh, so what? I like it. <laughs> you know, it's a little different. Um, <laughs> I do this whole show so I can be that guy for 10 seconds. I, I love it. <laughs> oh, so what? <laughs> Who's it hurting? Sniff, sniff. Um, <laughs> <laughs> there are <laughs> there are advantages there are advantages uh, to being with a fuck man over a fuck boy is you will not get a text late at night saying you up <laughs> you won't from a fuck man he he does not know how to do that uh, he can't uh, you will you will in fact get a voicemail from a fuck man uh asking you uh, to uh, come help him up because he has fallen down. Uh, <laughs> help me, I, I'm fallen. Um, I'm alone in my dark kitchen, please. <laughs> I realized something is now, see, my, my ex and I we were going to go on this big vacation and then we broke up and I can't go on that vacation. And I realized that um, a man in his 40s can't go on vacation alone. It's inappropriate. You need, you need a partner of some sort. Um, you know, a woman in her 40s can go on vacation alone, you know? People are, if you encounter a woman, you know, on vacation alone, you're like, oh, I, uh, I think she's just trying to get her groove back. <laughs> she's just here finding her groove. <laughs> if you see a man in his 40s alone on vacation, you're like, uh, I think that guy's a sex tourist. <laughs> yep, he's here to suck off a lady boy, that's for sure. Like, no, I'm, I'm in Bangkok for the architecture. Sure you are. <laughs> You're here to suck off a lady boy. <laughs> All right, maybe I am. Maybe that's how I get my groove back, <laughs> is by sucking off a couple lady boys. <sighs> Someone asked me the, the other day, they go, what's a lady boy? And um, I'm like, well, it's kind of like, a, like a, a gin and tonic. You know, all, all the ingredients are in the name. Um, <laughs> That's all. You just put one in there and then, you know, the, with a hint of lime because it's Thailand. So, you know, it's, uh, you know. <laughs> but, uh, yeah. I, uh, I realize that I'm like um, 41. I'm doing, uh, I have the exact same amount of property. Um, 
uh, romantic partners and children that I had when I was 15. <laughs> I'm doing about the exact same. Not 14. 14, I had a girlfriend and a treehouse. So I'm um, trying to get back to those glory years, you know? I built my own tiny home in the sky. And we would go up there. We, we would hook up when we were 14. It's pretty exciting. Um, and then I got, I got sent to like an all-boys boot camp. And I didn't see another naked lady until I was like 19 and a half. And so I really used that memory. I really leaned, <laughs> I leaned on it for quite a while. I remember turning 19 being like, I should probably stop thinking about this. Uh, you know? Because if you've had like, if you were in a relationship uh, and you were hooking up with somebody when you were young, you still have that memory in your head. And if you think about it, you're a pedophile. So, you know, you gotta store it over there. You know, it's just, I know it's there, it's locked up. Um, you know, I'm a good guy. <laughs> anyway, um, doing all right. I, um, I'd like to have kids. I'd like to have kids, but, um, you know, I think it's too late for me to have kids. I, I think uh, I'm already too tired. Um, I'm so tired all day, every day. All day, every day. Right now, right now I'm exhausted. I am exhausted. Now, I'll tell you what, audience, I have not had a long day. Um, <laughs> nope, I woke up, I had breakfast, and I came straight here. <laughs> and I am exhausted. Uh, all day, every day, I wake up every morning finished. Uh, I, I start my day finished. Every day, just, ah, fuck. Ah. No, no, that's how I wake up. No! Um, I once dated a morning person. She was like, let's attack the day. I was like, attack the day. A day is not to be attacked. A day is to be submitted to. Say, have your way with me, day. Use all my little holes. Um. <laughs> it is funny that I come up here uh, out of the rain and I, 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 I say, uh, I shout, use all my little holes. Uh, and then I leave and someone gives me money. Uh, it's kind of fun to think about that. <laughs> if just me. Um, you guys have to laugh. Uh, if you don't laugh, this is just a, a sad speech. Uh, so, no. You know, I would like to have kids. I would like to have kids. But um, the only issue is uh, my, my only sibling has pretty severe autism. And I'm a comedian. So, you know. Snake eyes. Uh, um, yeah. <laughs> Pretty bonkers to think about that stuff. Right? I think about that sometimes. Like, my, an my ancestors go up all the way back to caveman times, and they kept having progeny, no matter the obstacles. Saber-toothed tigers, they kept having children. Ice ages, famines, they kept the ball moving. Um, my grandfather, this is true, he survived... Uh, uh, getting caught hiding Jewish people during the war, uh, the Gulf War. And, um, <laughs> yep, he thought if he tickled them, rubies would come out. And he would lock them in his basement waiting for the jewels. And it's, uh, it was later found to be criminally insane. It was a, uh, a dark point in our family's history that uh, they would rather me not mention. But um, I feel with what's going on now, I should, you know, the... No, no, it was actually, he did do that, but it was during World War II, which was, you know, not the sweet spot to hide a Jewish person. And that's when you're going to want to do it. Um, yeah. That was a sweet zone in human history where you could hide one. Um, 1939 to 1945, that's when you, you know, you wanted to do it. 1946, you're a bit of a dick, you know. Uh, let him out. <laughs> phone call rang, it was uh, Mossad. Uh, <laughs> <Chick -a! laughs> yeah, he did do that, though, you know. He's a good guy, you know. I'm, I'm proud of it, so I, I like to tell people. And um, what happened was, is he got caught, and he was able to free a few people before he could, he, you know, they, 
and they, he got caught. But then my grandma was able to find out what jail he was at and bribe the guards with silverware and whatever. And then they went underground, fled to the south of France. And then uh, my mother was born there. Then they sold a Picasso a ceramic bowl for a boat ride to Canada. Then they were janitors in the new country when they were lawyers in the old country. And they put my mom through college. And it all ends here tonight in a basement. So, um, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's crazy. <laughs> crazy to think about that stuff. Yeah. But yeah, my uh, my brother my brother has autism and he's uh, I love him very much and um, you know it's a, he's a big part of my life. But when you have someone with a disability in your family, um, you tend to think about it too much, you know, too much. And statistically, a lot of you know what I'm talking about. It's always on the forefront of your head. An example of this is 10 years ago, I was dating a woman in Canada, and she had like a three-year-old son and he was just mumbling he wasn't speaking you know he's like I, you, 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 I was like oh no because um, I know that being nonverbal after the age of two is an early warning sign of autism so it took me a while to sit her down but I was like I think your son has autism he's not speaking and then she paused and looked at me and was like he's speaking French you idiot I was like, whoopsie daisy, uh, <laughs> yikes. Um, little rusty on the old French, been a while since high school. And uh, turns, out, um, turns out he was bilingual, uh, you know, it's, he was quite bright. Uh, it's, uh, that's two verbals if you're counting, two verbals. And by that metric, I have autism. So um, my name is Graham Kay. Thank you very much, bye-bye.